Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, how's it going? You guys got reminders, that's awesome. I think scheduling them is what works. That's my suspicion because you guys have been saying that ever since I started scheduling them. Because I finally figured out how to do that. Because I would schedule them, but then I was like, how does my stream connect with it? And it was just something I didn't notice that I needed to do when I went live. So, hi Sydney, hi Margit, <laughs> hi Delwyn, hi Isha, how's it going? How's it going? This fabric, it looks fine right now, but um, it's gonna do some funky things on the camera, I think. Okay, it's you can start seeing it. I turned down the sharpness to hopefully calm it down. But now you can see that there's little tiny lines because it's a twill weave. Hey, Fiona. Hi, Mafio. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad, Mafio. I will ship your order today, Mafio. The weather's been kind of crazy here. Like it, um, there's like two streets down is like the snow line. <laughs> I know it's California, but <laughs> the, um, and then it's been snowing on that side of it or it's super fog. Like if you, if I could show you outside my window, you could, can't see anything. The fog, there's this fog called Thule fog here. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, Barbara, did I say hi to you? Yeah, that, that's nothing, Aisha. You should see sometimes. That's why, um, you can't, I can't do stripes. I can't do certain plaids, um, small, really small, close prints. It's my biggest struggle with the fabrics I get access to on Minerva because Minerva has an incredible selection of fabric. And as an ambassador, it's very generous. They give us access to, it's like 2000 fabrics. I'm not sure if it's really that number. It doesn't feel like I'm going through 2000 when I'm looking through it. But, um, and I can do whatever I want with them. You know, it's very, very, very generous. However, the ones that I get access to, they're awesome. There's a lot of really awesome fabrics. They will not play nice with my camera, so I have to be careful. Or they're, or they would, but they're too dark. So you wouldn't be able to see, so. Hi, Ray. Right, nice, nice. Hi, Beverly. Yeah, it's been really cold here, Sydney. We have multiple creeks on our property right now. <laughs> we should only have two. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, if you want to change your mind, Mafia, let me know. <laughs> I don't like it when people are like, oh, shoot, maybe I shouldn't have gotten that. <laughs> but yeah, I'll send, I'll send them out today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, is it the whole thing, Aisha? Because I've had the little fingertip ones there were little tiny fingertip ones and I, and they just didn't work. Nice, Carrie. That's nice. You have today and tomorrow off. Do you have time off next week too? I think my husband has, he has like, I think he has um, like the time between Christmas and New Year's and he took two days off before or something like that. I can't remember what it is. 
whatever it is, it's never as much as other people because he feels like, okay, I'm not going to take all this time off because everyone's going to be working or whatever. And, um, cause he has a ton of time off built up and then, um, <clears throat> he'll go into the office, which isn't now, like now he doesn't go into the office, but back, you know, pre Panini, he would go in and there'd be nobody there. He'd be the only one. He's like, why didn't I know that everybody's taking this day off? So it was funny. Oh, nice. Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. Aisha. All right, Terry. Thanks. Okay, well, I will. I've been watching in the control room, um, from the control room for the content creator studio. That's why I've been able to deal with the bots. If you're not here, it's it's um because I do the the going live early thing. So I've been able to see. Okay. <clears throat> Did anyone get? I don't know if anyone's using this code. <laughs> this code. Someone said it didn't work yesterday. I double checked and that was the code. So I'm just wondering if they, maybe they used it on something else. I can't remember who that was. It was someone that I don't see as regularly. So I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but all right. Um, I am going to warn you. I am sewing this out of order. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a bot. I got it, Terry. You keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing this in a different order from the instructions. Hi, Elena. Elena, I <laughs> have something funny to tell you. Um, oh, Terry got it, okay. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna do this a little different from the instructions. She starts you off with the sleeves. I love that method because then your sleeves are kind of done and then when you get to doing everything else, you just kind of seamlessly put it together. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like, like I really like prepping every little thing. So then you just sew it all together, like assemble your collar, you know, put your pockets on. Um, you know, put your, assemble your cuffs, then maybe put the sleeves and then put the sleeves together, you know, things like that. And then you can just kind of just sew it together and it's like, oh, this seems so easy. So um, I'm just going to do it in the, the standard order of operations, which is normally uh, center front placket and po front pockets, um, yoke to back and front shoulders, uh, collar, collar stand. And then for tomorrow or Saturday, I will do the rest. I will do the side seams, the sleeve um, plackets and cuff and underarm and sleeve to shirt and hem. So that's my normal order of operations for a button down shirt. <laughs> I don't know, Allison. I don't think any of us have been brave to click on that link. I hope, hope no one has. So Elena, I did, I recorded a video yesterday and it's coming out tomorrow. And so when I asked everyone for hashtags to review, um, while I was looking at one of them, you're, there's photos of you in one of them. I think it was the Pietra pants. I was like, oh, there's Elena. <laughs> it was pretty fun. <clears throat> I don't know what every viewer looks like, but I know what some of you look like, you know, and I remember you sharing the pictures of your Halloween costume. It's pretty cute. So maybe it'll make it into the video. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So I've got the fronts. I've stacked my pieces in the order I'm gonna sew them. So I have my two fronts here and the pockets. And the next I have my yokes and my back and then all the collar and collar stand pieces right here. And then in my other pile, I just have the, what's left for the sleeve, the plackets and the cuffs. I've already interfaced my pieces. This is what we're making today. Sorry. This is the men's version. Um, but Christina, who is wardrobe by me pattern says the Anna is the exact same instructions. So, <laughs> so, um, if you're interested in making the women's version, um, and you still need a tutorial, this will work. Um, so that's kind of nice. And, I think you could use these instructions for a lot of button down shirts. I noticed the sleeve placket on this one is drafted a little differently than say the Fairfield. The seam allowances too are gonna to be a really big difference. For this one, they are three eighths of an inch uh, throughout. Whereas the Fairfield, you really have to pay attention because they're different on the um, armhole, side seams and underarm. And they're different from front to back. So you have to pay attention to it. And it's something that took me a bit to get used to, but it's because it's been designed for flat felled seams 
in a certain order that you do them. So it's nothing wrong with it, it's just different. So I have this pretty bright, don't I? <laughs> I'm trying to uh, wash out the, the weirdness, the lines. All right, so I interfaced my placket a little differently than, they, than, than she has you do it. She has you in the instructions to do it right up to this edge. That's totally fine. What I find is like, this is what's gonna face out. And so when I fold, fold, that's the interfaced side right there, right? That's why I do it this way. Um, I also interfaced both left and right, and I explained why I did this. And it's because I've had some issues where my interfacing, it kind of draws up the fabric a little bit. And then my left and my right, are, it's really hard to get the buttons and buttonholes on because even if they were cut identically, and theoretically they're the exact same length, one side's shorter and it's really hard to do the buttons and buttonholes that way. Um, so I just decided to interface both sides. So, all right, I lost a pin, I hear it, here it is. So this is for the pocket placement. All right, we're gonna go iron our placket first. Ooh, I almost pressed end stream for some reason. <laughs> Telling you guys, I have a button thing. I see a big button that says wants me to push it, and I want to push it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna also iron the pocket while we're here. So I decided fabric-wise, my fabric, I don't know if you can tell, it's lighter on this side than this side. See the difference? This is a 90% a cotton and 10% yak wool that I got from a online shop called Making Fabric. Wait. Maker's Fabric. Wait, is that what it's called? Maker's Fabric, right? <laughs> it sounds so different. Um, so I decided to put the brushed side towards the skin. The both sides are super soft. So I just decided to make the softer side towards the body. So that's gonna be my wrong side. I decided that off camera yesterday. It's why I hadn't um, interfaced things quite yet because I was still deciding on that. I wanted to think about it. <clears throat> yeah, right, Sydney? I totally agree with you. Totally agree. So this has a one and three eighths inch hem allowance. I'm getting pretty excited. So yesterday, I'm not gonna tell you either, but I, um, I drew out of a pocket bucket <laughs> my first three patterns that I'm gonna do pattern reviews for. Can find out tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I know, Sydney. You are not alone. I have plenty of things I've sewn inside out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's really hard to tell sometimes. Um, I've seen, uh, you know, the fabric vendor not know. So, you know. <laughs> In some cases, it, it actually really matters. Um, and then in outdoor fabrics, it really matters because a lot of times there might be some sort of a treatment or something. This looks whiter. This side I lost the notch. Oh, there I see the notch. I can see it. I just couldn't see the separation. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Yeah, half and half. I right. This fabric is incredible, Allison. And man, did I play fabric chicken yesterday. It didn't feel stressful though, but you know, <laughs> it's only 44 inches wide. So I was a little like, oh, that means more fabric. Wait, I wanna fold that up to that edge there. Just like that. It just looks wider right there, you see that? I want to put a bigger table right here, but oh man, it is tight in here. I'm going, I'm thinking about rearranging in here a little bit. It would mean that my window would be behind my face cam. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe I should do some tests before I do all the work. But I've, and I'm also thinking of putting a bigger table here. Well, actually, it would, this would be the pattern table, but I would put a bigger table for under these things. And I swear I got that straight. Look at that. That's so annoying. Um, and I would like to put another camera above. You know, I this is this is pretty. 
That's pretty annoying. I'm gonna say crooked, but it's also pretty annoying. I'm just gonna fold it. This stuff is so fluffy. I'm I'm fighting to fold it. I'm gonna do a little less. So here's my notch. If I fold here and then I fold here, it starts getting pretty thick. And it feels like I'm a little inaccurate. So I'm gonna do a tiny bit less because of the thickness. Yeah, I can't wait for the pattern reviews too. I'm um, gonna do one more video before I do them and it's going to be what like what the um, the rubric, <laughs> rubric or the metric is. It might even be downloadable. Then people can even do it themselves on their own pattern. I wanna cover that interfacing, but I want a straight line. Look at that, that's freaking annoying. I'm really annoyed by it, can you tell? How annoyed am I? <laughs> so annoyed. <laughs> isn't it? It's so passive aggressive to laugh when you're mad about something, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you just gotta laugh sometimes. This is my... Uh, right front, so this is the button side, not the buttonhole side. Do I scrap the interfacing on both? Hmm, it's pretty thick. I'm gonna look at my interfacing thin real quick. Well, how, what width is it? It's like one inch. Let's see. I'm coming back. That's bright, huh? Sorry. Just gonna leave it here for a second. I got my Joann's fabric, um, 10 yards of woven, and it didn't come on a bolt, which is, you know, I appreciate that for the shipping. But I have an empty bolt, so I'm going to wind it on there. I can't tell if it got a little crooked while I was ironing it. Or if um, maybe I didn't have the fabric laid out. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. I didn't even see that one. I'm not in front of the computer right now. There is a groove in my uh, ruler. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see if this will be better. I'm kind of doubtful right now. Brand new rot rotary blade, by the way. Ruined it. Five minutes in. You hate to see it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna iron this. This is one argument for just sticking to the instructions, huh? <laughs> That 
The hashtag review video was kind of fun, but um, I felt like it's still pretty hard to convey what I'm looking at. That looked a little fatter there. It looks like I chopped up this interfacing with a knife. You know? That's not wool. <laughs> Right, Penny, I know. Yeah, what have I been looking at lately? And it's... What have I been looking at? And I'm like, wait, but that's not it then. Gosh, what is it? Boy, I can't think of what the fabric is I look at and then I'm like, well, wait a minute, but then that's not what it is. And it's, it's that kind of thing. They say wool, whatever, and it's actually not wool. It'll come to me. I'm always looking for a lot of different things at once. Fabric shopping is a lot of work. You know what's interesting is that's the one thing we used to get all the time at Chicken Boots was people were really um, naively jealous of the fabric shopping aspect. While it was fun on one level, it was actually one of the most stressful parts of the job because you're trying to pick fabrics that you think will sell, that you like yourself. Um, and um, <clears throat> sometimes you see what they have on offer, your vendor comes and you're like, huh, I don't really like any of this. And then you start thinking, well, gosh, well, who else am I going to look at then? Like, what other vendor? You know, I don't have very many vendors, right? It's limited what, who you have to work with. And so you start going, well, maybe I'll look through the line again. And then you start doubting yourself. You're like, am I just picking this because it's available? Do I actually like this? Did I just not give this a fair shake the first time I saw it? And you start really doubting. And it, and it was really helpful when I had Rayanne because she would be my second set of eyes. And sometimes she would really fall hard for a fabric and I'd be like, huh, I don't see it. But then she'd be right, you know? And, and so it was just one of those things where on one level you should always pick things you really, really like because you're the designer, but you really have to also pick things people will buy. And they may not be one and the same sometimes or sometimes people don't see your vision, you know? And so it was really, really stressful. <laughs> Especially picking out binding. Binding was always the thing, like the make or break sometimes. Sometimes it would, it would like bring it all together and sometimes it would just kill it, you know? So, um, you know, like shopping for fabric, we'd get so excited and then we'd kind of be like, huh, <laughs> we're not that into this this year, you know, this season or whatever. And people, um, would say things like, oh, it must be nice just to be like surrounded with pretty fabrics all the time. And it's like, it, it is, but it's, it's, um, it happens like three to four times a year. So it's not often that you're shopping and it was a lot of investment. So I would, if I found a group of fabrics for like, I would buy six groups for fall. That was 18 fabrics then that I had to find. And I was buying about 180 yards per group. So 90 yards times 18. That's about how much fabric I would buy. Sometimes more of some and a little bit less of others. That's how it worked. And um, so it was a huge investment. And then you don't get it for months. So I would take lots of photos and I would sit with it and I would look at it and I would you know, measure repeats and blah, blah, blah. And I would think about it for months. And then it would get there and you're like, that did not print the same color as what we saw, you know? So it was a lot of work. And I find like now it's stressful, but it's totally different. It's more like, I don't know what I want, you know? And I don't, at least I'm not disappointing anybody. But at the same time, sometimes I'm not finding what I want and I really want something in particular. And then I'm a little bit nervous that it's not gonna come the way I want it, so. 
It's funny how that didn't change. Yeah, exactly, Allison. Now what? Exactly. So I just lightened up the um, pressure of my presser foot, which is right here on most machines. And I did that because this fabric is pretty thick and gushy and lofty when it's folded in three. And what happens is if it's too too much, I put, I have, admittedly, I use a lot of pressure on my, my, my machine. I love the pressure. But what happens is it'll do this. It'll push my placket like this. And do you ever get the placket where by the time you get down to the end here, your placket's like hanging down a half inch below? We're trying to prevent that because <laughs> we want it to line up, right? So see, these are some of my tips. I lighten the pressure up. I also hold it on above and below because I, I don't want to take no for an answer. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. How's it going? <laughs> Hi from California. One of our mods is in Georgia. Oh my gosh, Penny, exactly. It's not like Joanne Fabrics has the best um, track record of fabrics you want to have for the rest of your life and your wardrobe too, you know? Like they, are, they serve a purpose. I, I like Joanne Fabrics for um, a lot of reasons but I'm not going there for linen or wool. You know, I'd go there for like quilting cottons, pillow forms, batting, things like that. The like staples, good things, you know? All right, so this is the <clears throat> placket that's gonna be on top. So I think it would look nice, <clears throat> excuse me, to do another stitch here on the edge. And I'm gonna do it from the top down from this side again, just so they look really similar. Because usually a placket would have some sort of detail, like a pleat, or it would be separate. Oh, Mafio, didn't you want to know how to do a contrast placket? Wait, was that you? Hi, Louise. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, you got another peach in the chat. <laughs> uh, oh, is that double-brushed Polly? Oh, that's, that's great to know, Sydney. That little watermelon dress I made for Hearts Fabric was in Double Brush Poly, and I had never used it, and I really liked it. Yeah, that's a great reason, Penny. I like shopping locally, but I was there the other day, and I said, so it doesn't look to me like you've gotten any apparel fabrics in a while. And there's a guy there he hasn't th that I don't know very well, and he's been there, I think, like less than a year. He was super chatty and probably a little bit more chatty than they wanted him to be. <laughs> and he was like, I know we haven't gotten any since like March. And I was like, I know why they got it in March. And it was probably because it had been ordered before the certain moment in time. And now, you know, they got it. But um, I was pretty disappointed. I was like, gosh, you know, I, I, but the thing is they serve a lot of quilters. And so great, you know, the quilters are got a great selection there. So. You know, it's just how it is. But you know, I wanna support local. All right, so this is gonna be on the opposite side of my machine needle because of the um, positioning of the placket. Same thing though, I'm gonna hold it really firm. And I'm pulling pretty hard. <laughs> just so you know, I'm pulling pretty hard. I grab both sides and I pull and keep it taut. I'm not pulling on it as it goes to the machine, I'm just pulling, the, holding the fabric and letting the machine pull it through. My machine is so gunked up with that dumb wax right now. This looks a little narrower. Your pl placket not being the same width from top to bottom, that can also make it um, drop below because basically it's a different length than on one uh, edge. You taking off, Sydney? All right, see ya. What is with all these bots, man? I didn't see what Dora said. Oh, really, Sydney? You didn't mention it last week, Mafio? It was you, Delwyn. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I know it was, it was someone. Um, all right, so 
I should have talked about this yesterday and I didn't think about it, um, but let's just talk about it as far as the pattern pieces go. Now that I've sewn it, I, you can't really see. All right, so when you're looking at this pattern piece and it's the piece of paper, you know that once this placket is all folded, the center of this placket in general is the center front, which means that if you put this shirt on the fold, it would be on that line right there. Let's draw a picture. All right, so anytime you're not sure where the center line is, uh, the center front of your garment, because you do need to know that for a lot of pattern adjustments for men's and women's, it's usually the center of your placket that would be your center front line. So this one, this is like a fat inch, it's like an inch and an eighth. So we'll say it's about right here, right? Can't see my chalk yet, let me get it going here. All right, so that's your center line. Then um, once you know that, you can make your placket however big you want. Hi Kim, how's it going? Yeah, good job, Terry. From Philly. I don't think I've ever been to Philly. Pretty sure I have not been to Philly. Yeah, I don't think I have. I'd love to go there. All right, so it's a little wiggly, right? So if you wanted a contrast placket and you wanted it to be able to be seen on the front of the garment, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at, okay, well, this is my center line and um, you can make your placket however wide you want. Just remember that you want an equal amount on either side of this line, right? On this one, it's this stitch line is the end of the placket. So what you could do is cut your pattern right here and add seam allowance to it, or add the seam allowance, then cut it off, right? And now your shirt is ready for a separate placket. So personally, I like quarter inch seam allowance, so what I would do is I would cut it along this line, add a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then I would make my placket. And then I would make my placket this amount, right, from seam line to fold line. That is only the top of your placket. You need a placket around the back and you need seam allowance to attach it. So if you're doing quarter inch seam allowance again, you would make your placket, like this one's one and an eighth inch wide, and then you would need the one and an eighth on the back, plus you would need the seam allowance to fold it under, um, or you could just do it in a seam, but I wouldn't do that personally, I'll tell you in a second. And then you need seam allowance on this side as well. So if this is one and an eighth wide plus the back, which is another one and an eighth, meaning two and a quarter inches, plus your seam allowance on each edge, quarter and a quarter, it's a two and three quarter inch wide placket cut. And then you can sew it to the seam. And so what I would do then is I would do it my way where I would sew it from the back, wrap it to the front, turn it under and top stitch it. Man, so many people are getting coal in their stockings today. Well, or this year. <laughs> so that is a removable placket. So just remember that this line right here is the seam line of the placket, that, that stitch line right here. But you need to add seam allowance to that. And if you wanted your placket to be narrower or wider, just remember that whatever you are adding here your extension, that's called your button extension. You're going to double it and then the seam would be here. So uh, this could be a one inch extension to here. Let's pretend like it goes out to the edge of this ruler here, right? That means that then the placket would go to like right here. Does that make sense? It would be a very wide placket. <laughs> So that, that is pretty much what you're looking at. So if you're trying to find it on a pattern, find where it finishes, find the center, and then um, usually the seam here is your seam line. I'll, I can show you on the pattern table sometime and it'll be a lot less confusing when we have um, some cut pieces. All right, let's put the, let's hem the pockets. I like to hem my pockets from the right side. 
That way I can, can kind of control the um, width being parallel. I'm just gonna use my awl to kind of make sure it doesn't ooch, because it wants to ooch. So you can see my stitch line's much higher on this side than this side. That's not actually much higher. I could have been closer to the edge though, look at that. <laughs> I'm just trying to go for some symmetry right now. No one's gonna see the back. attach our pockets. This one doesn't have both pins. I think this one still does. Oh, this one lost both. Well, shoot. There, there you go, Terry. Yeah, Delwyn. That, a proper placket, um, like in higher-end clothing, isn't folded like this. It's uh, usually a separate piece. And then the, um, like when you have that one that has like a little pleat right here, it, um, the one on the Fairfield is a, it's like a easy way to do it, but there is a nicer method, but it is a little confusing to explain the folding. I remember the first time I did it, I was like, what is going on here? I think I was in college and they were showing us how to sew it and I was like, why is this so complicated? <laughs> but it, it looks nice in the end and it's completely clean finish, you know? And, and now maybe I would look at it and go, oh, I totally get that. But at the time it was just like my, my brain was having a lot of trouble wrapping my head around it. All right, so I have one pin <laughs> to go by here. <laughs> if you only have one pin to go by, what are you gonna do? We're going to position this so that it's parallel to our center front line. We're gonna put it on the seam line and then we can compare to the other side, for the other side. You could pre-iron this. I, I kind of I kind of think like, you see all this little white thread of mine? I'm gonna pull off a lot of that. It easily comes off. Get rid of it now. How are the cameras doing with it? They're okay. Should I brighten it up a little? It is, it looks, it looks so cool in person. It's so fuzzy. It's really soft. It's the fat, softest flannel ever. All right, I always start with my pocket upside down. Now you do like a little triangle up at the top here. So I'm going into, I went a little too far, into the placket and then I go back out to this outer edge and then I go down along the edge. Sorry, my pressure foot's going up and down like a crazy person. I, I like how um, stable this flannel is. You know how some flannels feel a little like flimsy and they, they, I don't know how to put it. They like, it's not that they curl, but their edges are not, oh gosh, I keep going one stitch too far. That's really annoying. I think the best way I could explain this flannel is if you're a knitter, you're un you'll understand this. You know when you have knit fabric, and if you're a sewist, you'll understand fabric when it's, when you have knitting, knit, oh my gosh, when you have stretch fabric and it curls, this feels like the opposite of that. It feels like double knit where um, it's so flat, the edge is so flat that it's very stable. We don't like those rolly stuffs. I almost did a dark gray thread, but I kind of wanted to accentuate that this is blue. I have 
not knit with yak. Is it really, really soft? Oh, I actually take that back. I had a shawl minute made out of it, and you're right, it is really soft. I have this one stitch down here, and you know, I kind of want to take it out, but I'm a little nervous about taking out stitches of this because I can't see my stitch very well. But I can see it pulling down here. If I can grab the stitch, there it is. Okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> that was the deal. <laughs> if I can find the stitch, I'll fix it. But you know like uh, how twill weaves are, if you've ever sewn denim, you grab one thread and you can sometimes snag your denim and it's not pretty. Okay, I'm gonna trim that really close. I'm just gonna reinforce the bottom of the pocket. Everything's kind of hidden with this stuff. All right, so for our other pocket, actually, this is what we'll do. We'll lay this one here, and then we'll line this up. And then we'll just lay it like this. Fold it up like this. Make sure all of that stays nice and flat. Fold it up. And we'll place our pocket right here. There's a lot of little ways to get around when you don't have the marking. Okay. You think it's softer than uh, cashmere? I actually think you might be right. Yeah, right? We were just talking about that yesterday, Terry. The shipping with them. What is their deal? It's like, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I think it'll be nice, Allison. Getting rid of all those little white threads. I mean, you might as well pull them off now, right? Because <laughs> otherwise they stick out of my pocket and we all know I hate that. I hate it when they stick out my pocket <laughs> at the top. I think as a home sewist, you're always trying to make your stuff look not home sewn. Which usually means picking really boring fabrics <laughs> and trimming your threads. <laughs> and then it looks doesn't look home sewn. <laughs> This reminds me of, uh, you know how when you were a kid, your teacher had those felt boards and they would like tell a story and they put like the little felt pieces on the board and it would just stick because it was felt. You don't need a lot of pins with flannel because the flannel just kind of like sticks to itself. That can also be a problem though because it's sticking to itself, you know. I don't really need that anymore. We'll get rid of you too. A little pinned a little too close to the edge here. I I really like the an angled pocket at the bottom for sewing reasons because when you turn the corner, then you don't have um, your seam allowance of the side like drifting out the bottom of the pocket. When it's on an angle like this, it, it's too short to do that. It's a bonus. What does that sound? Hey, Libby, how's it going? Happy Thursday. My mom brought me a Tylenol yesterday. I can never keep all those straight, <laughs> like Tylenol and um, Advil. Ibuprofen, leave. I, I I get a little lost in it, and my mom's a retired nurse, and so she brought me some Tylenol, and I felt so much better in the afternoon. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's all I needed? Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. 
Do you guys hear that noise? All right, we're gonna do the yolk now. I don't do the burrito method. I don't wanna hear it. I always get at least one person commenting how much better it is. Great. It's better. I don't think so. Uh, I wanna look at the pleats on this. I have the pattern, the instructions pulled up on the screen here. Oh, it's a box pleat. Okay. Okay. You don't hear anything? It can't be a plane. It's so freaking foggy. It's like pea soup out there. All right, so this is a box pleat. I don't know what that noise is. No? Okay. All right. Uh, this is a box pleat, so where's my other um, markings? Let's look at the width of the um, yoke. I think I only have one. I don't have a center notch. I'm going to look at the... So if this goes here, why like right here? It's kind of big. All right. I'm just gonna figure it out as I sew. I'm just kidding. Hey, Nancy, how's it going? Yay! <laughs> Did it not work for you either, Kathy Sue? I do the taco method, that's right. <laughs> I forgot we named it. <laughs> hey, it's all Mexican food. It's all good no matter what. The flip and hold. Yes, it is definitely flip and hold. All right, so if you don't have your notches, you can always find out. At least I have one here, so I know about where this is supposed to go. And so what I'll do is flatten this out to the notch and then pleat it over to here. Make sure all my edges are lined up. And we'll do the same on this side. What is that noise? I'll um, ask her today and maybe I'll have a um, solution for you guys by Saturday. Sorry about that. There was an issue last time too and I don't remember what it was. It's only, f the, the discount is only on the Anna and the Jensen. I don't know if that helps anybody. Maybe it's with my affiliate link. Don't use the affiliate link. Just use, uh, just go to their site and do it. Maybe that's what it is. Because I may only have an affiliate link in the profile. All right, so I'm just going to do this bottom edge like everybody does. All right. Let's see how my box pleat's looking. It's very big. Three-eighths inch seam is such a weird amount on wovens. I think that that's just a, um, a, a metric preference, to be honest, because I see it a lot with patterns that are originate in metric. Three-eighths, it might be um, the way sewing evolved. Yeah, yeah, of course, Kim. Happens a lot, right? I totally agree with you, Allison, and yet they're often in beginner patterns. I totally agree with you. Gathers are a pain in the butt. I mean, it's it's not like it's hard. It's that they're really fiddly to get right, you know? 
And there's, and once you start getting better at sewing, you start realizing, oh, there's actually nicer ways to do this, you know? Like you can make it look nicer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Most wovens I like half inch. Um, and then um, knits I do three eighths. What is that noise now? What noise is that? Something's touching something. Nothing's allowed to touch. It's like food on a plate. <laughs> Although actually I like putting all my food in a big pile. Oh, you have Kathy Sue? I'm sorry. I'll fix it by, um, I'll ask her and have it fixed by Saturday. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's making them even exactly, Kim. My um, tip when I'm doing something like a really big set thing, like a, a whole waist, is I will break them at the side seams, but I overlap the gathering stitches. And so if you're doing two rows of gathering stitches, it's really hard to get four rows to overlap there, but you want them to overlap so you don't have like blank spots in your gathers. And that's can, that can be kind of hard, you know? I'm going to, um, I'm going to sew the shoulders first before I top stitch the bottom. What do you think of that pleat? You really think it's supposed to be like that? Doesn't that look really far apart? Let's, um, I'm going to make it narrower. <laughs> Maybe it's lawn equipment. It sounds like a remote control airplane. <laughs> right, Allison? Exactly. It's probably just some silly thing. It looks really wide. Maybe I should get the pattern out and just check the markings. There were so many notches on the yoke, though. Ooh. Maybe it's a, a wood chipper. There's a lot of that happening up here. Okay. Okay, you know what it is? Is you're gonna put that notch to your center notch. Pretty sure. No, that's not what it would be. Hmm. Now I just wanna try and figure it out and I know I should get the pattern, sorry. All right, so here's my center notch. That's non-negotiable. I think that I would like it more like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what it is. You're gonna put that, that notch to the center. That's what it is. That's what it is, I did it wrong. When you're doing pleats like this, just make sure that all these little edges are flush with the edge you're gonna sew. Because otherwise what happens is your pleat um, might look uh, asymmetrical. It'll almost look like one side is kind of like maybe winging out a little differently. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, awesome, Kathy. I'm gonna line all that up a little better. Let's see what we think of that. That looks way better. That's what it is. This is such a good example of why pleat markings <clears throat> are really easy to interpret multiple ways. So another thing is when I, when I am doing a pleat like this, I kind of make sure that this looks perpendicular to that edge. If you just let one corner drop down a little bit, it will make it a little cockeyed and it's you can't really fix it past this point. This is kind of your only opportunity, so. All right. Yeah, that looks better, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's do the top with the taco method. <laughs> um, all right, so I just do this. I just put it to the shoulder like this. 
one layer and then I, I flip it around <laughs> like that and that's all I do. <laughs> but man, people love their burrito method and you should totally use it if you like it. I, there's no, I don't have any problems with it. I've never done it. I figured this out myself a really long time ago because I was really tired at the time when they used to give you instructions for your shirt they would make you hand sew that. And, and we're not really about that hand sewing life around here, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, and I also just didn't like that it would get a little bit off. You could, you could edge stitch it, but I wasn't a very good sewist to be able to do that. So I just figured out how to, this is a really long shoulder, do it this way. And uh, last time I showed this, someone in the comments said, oh my gosh, I figured that out too a really long time ago because I, for the same reasons, like it was just really popular to make these kinds of shirts. And I was really determined to make these kinds of shirts. But I was really tired of them um, not coming out very nice. And I didn't think at the time to do it so that, because you would have one of your yoke, yoke shoulders would be loose and you would turn it under and top stitch it. And it was just so hard. Oh no, Barbara. Yeah, it, it, I, I do admit like doing either method, I think it's kind of hard to keep track. And so this is what I say, I'll do it from the shoulder this time. So um, I only get one layer like this, right? And you can't get lost in the sauce on this, right? So you look at this and you go, okay, that's my shoulder line, right? And then we're going to flip it like this and we're gonna tune everything else out and we were gonna tell ourselves this edge and these edges, they go together no matter what it feels like. These go together. Look into my eyes, you know? <laughs> and, don't, um, and don't back down. And then you just start with a little bit, like get it started. Put up your shirt up here and then start arranging it because look, they're kind of falling. So I straighten the bottom layer first, then the next layer, and then the top layer. And going from the shoulder to the neckline is easier, just so you know. And then just make sure that all of this that's getting folded in there, it doesn't sneak into your seam. But in general, it, it doesn't, so it just depends. This is really great too for, um, then you don't have to roll up your whole shirt and it might not get as wrinkly. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna top stitch it. I say do whatever method you like, but that's the one I like doing. And it's just cause I, out of de desire and need, <laughs> figured it out. I don't know, what do you guys think about the top stitching on this? It's, it's kind of like too, it's so floofy. I'm gonna put a second row in. I really can't go back if I put a second row in though. What do you guys think? Two rows? I'm gonna do two rows. Eee, nervous. I think that looks better. Don't back down. <laughs> Nice, I don't know who that is. That's awesome, Libby. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do two rows. The reason I'm doing two rows is because one row, see how thick this is? It's not hard to sew. It's not like thick, thick, it's just fluffy. And that one row looks, it, look, it kind of sinks in there too much, in my opinion. That's not even, that first one's not even that straight. But don't look at it. All right. I hear a noise, it's bugging me. Oh, it's my scissors, that's what it is, okay. This is so thick, I don't, it's pushing my presser foot a little bit. 
and I'm kind of sliding it so that I'm not getting that thing I was worried about with the placket where it's pulling my fabric like this. I don't want it to torque along the yoke. You're happy right now if you didn't cut your yoke on the bias. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm getting, when I get to my pleat here, even though it's already a seam, I actually do kind of arrange it and just make sure everything's kind of, I'm gonna go to my neck right here and kind of give it a nice little tug. See that? I just, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to keep all these layers right on top of each other and not like pushed one way or the other. I could be doing a better job, like if I pressed this and then maybe even put some pins um, parallel to the seam, just to kind of stabilize it. That would, that would probably give me a better finish. I do like challenging myself though, obviously. Oh yeah, I could have done a better job on this. I did better on the last half. We doubled down with that double row. All right, I'm gonna stay stitch my neckline now, just inside that 3 8 inch seam allowance. That got a little less. That's okay though. We're just trying to make sure our, our uh, neck isn't going to get all wingy on us, especially if you're doing this on like a linen. <clears throat> you might even consider stay stitching before you get to this point. Just individual pieces. Yeah, right, Heidi? Hi, Nancy, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, Heidi, if you do both of them parallel to each other, it, it counteracts that, right? <laughs> All right, this is looking pretty good. What I notice is that this fabric has a subtle one-way nature about it. So when I look at it like this, when I see the front, it looks, it looks different. Can you see it? You can see the front looks bluer. Did I actually cut it one way? I can't remember if I did or not. I must have. Interesting. Well, that's good. Ah, oh, they use a double needle top stitch machine, Penny. Not a cover stitch. It's a little different. It's, it's got two bobbins. Like on your denim, that's a double bobbin, double needle top stitch machine. They're pretty magical. I watched one sew a pocket once. And so when it, it was doing a double needle around the pocket and both needles went like this. This one stopped. And then it turned it. And then they started again. This one stopped. This one did one stitch and then they, they synced up again because the inside perimeter is a shorter distance. So the, um, the left needle knows when to stop. It's pretty, really, really cool. All right, let's do our um, collar. I'm gonna do the collar a little differently than I normally do because I'm trying to get better at this other method. Uh, if, you, if you want just a dedicated collar collar stand video. I have one in the how to playlist. And um, <clears throat> my first tip, and I can't stress this enough, make all the seam allowances cut down to a quarter inch. It makes a huge difference when you're sewing a collar collar stand, especially if it's something that you just find kind of fiddly or you just don't like it or you're just feeling like, okay, this is a little beyond my skill right now, but I want to, I want to tackle this. Trim it down to a quarter inch seam allowance. It's gonna be okay. Stay stitch your neckline first, if that makes you more comfortable, um, and just stay stitch it just inside that quarter inch seam allowance, and then um, trim all the rest of it off. Because like the, the shirt in the video is the Archer, and that has 5 eighths inch seam allowance around it, and it makes a big difference. You now on team, <laughs> no bias cut you, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, but you know, if you stabilize it, Kathy, it's fine. All right, so we have our top collar, our under collar, and then our collar stands. I'm gonna sew this at the 3 8 inch. I'm probably gonna hate it a little bit, but that's okay. All right? We like sewing drama around here, apparently. You guys do at least. 
All right, we're gonna put this right sides together. And um, I'm really hoping that this is the outer perimeter. <laughs> we're gonna sew around the perimeter. And remember this piece here, I cut it down just a tiny bit to be smaller. It's very, very subtle. And when that's the case, you're gonna make sure you line up your raw edges. Otherwise it won't work. If you just let it relax on there and then sew it at the 3 8 inch seam, you've lost all of that amount that you trimmed off. It just sits there in the seam allowance. So just kind of pull that over. And uh, you made it easier on ourselves with the points here. Because you don't want to stretch your collar to fit. All right, and then let's get this here. You can see, see that difference right there? That's good. You don't have to do this. I know it probably seems a little advanced to have to trim that off of your collar, but this is what I'll say about that. That may seem like an extra step that seems really fiddly, but it's gonna make the finish of your collar look better without any effort. And I think that that's the, my selling point to do it. All right, and now we're gonna trim down these corners. I don't just lop off the corners. I, I just kind of trim them away like this. <laughs> yeah, I think you just figure out what method works for you, right Libby? And then that's what you do. Maybe if I tried the burrito, I'd like it, but I don't know. All right, and I'm gonna turn out our points here. And we're gonna press it too. I won't be that cavalier, not with my collar. Ooh, that point looks actually pretty good. I'm not known for my points, I will admit. There are so many really great tools and methods out there, you know, putting the thread in the point and then pulling it. I just don't. All right, I'm gonna go iron this. So you can see, like, look at how my collar wants to like flop out flat. I take advantage of that um, initially. I know the interfaced one's my outer collar, so I'm actually gonna press the seam allowance it wants to press towards the under collar. We'll just let it do that. And we're just gonna press it. I'm even gonna like poke my iron down in there. This isn't very warm right now. Who, who is this person? I have to try, I have to check her out. Frey, what was her name? Have you tried her patterns, Barbara? I don't even know who this is, but <laughs> I'm inserting myself. <laughs> Come on, warm up. This one little thread here. If I press the seam allowance one way, it just makes the next step a lot easier. So now when we press this, we're gonna line up this edge here. And we're gonna let this seam pull towards the under collar. You see it right there? There's the seam. And hopefully it does it on these little ends too. My, like my fabric is really thick, so I'm really glad I did this on this. If this were something like a, maybe a um, shirting, you know, like a thin shirting, I probably wouldn't have worried as much about making the collar different, but I still would have done it. Because <laughs> now the collar is still, it's laying completely flat, but that seam is pulled to the underside naturally. Let's press it a little bit more. Oh, Janet Cray, that's right. I've heard of island sewing system. What is that? 
All right, so here's our collar. And if you want to top stitch your collar, now is the time. You can't really wait uh, late till later because once it's in the collar stand, it's kind of awkward to top stitch it. So you're gonna wanna do that now. And maybe I'll do my double row again. And the same thing, I'm kind of gently pushing this fabric just so it doesn't pull, because it's two layers. I don't want it to blump toward me. I don't know what other word to use. Push toward me, not maybe blump. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, that sounds really familiar to me. Maybe I've run across her. Does she have a different YouTube? channel name maybe maybe that's why you know sometimes someone will be talking about someone and I'm like oh that sounds so interesting and then they'll send it to me and I'm like oh I watch this person they just have a totally different name not quite enough for a full stitch but here we go I'm gonna do two rows because So you can't do this kind of twin needle top stitching with a twin needle for your home machine, just so you guys know. It's because of that whole reason I was just showing you with the, um, the denim pocket and why the, the you know, because that inner length is a different length. Ooh, that got a little further away. All right. All right, so now we're going to attach this. Let me think about how I'm doing this. So this is gonna be a little different than how I do it in that how-to video. I'm gonna do it where <clears throat> the last seam is going to be at the top of the collar stand on the, on the uh, outside. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and a bend over and a lump, yeah, blump. <laughs> yeah. Of course Nancy's like, a gadget? <laughs> Yeah, I did mafia. No, I didn't make a pa separate pattern piece. You're right. I trimmed it after cutting. So right, I think I did that right towards the end. You could have, I don't know if you were here yesterday, but I did it towards the end when um, I go to do the um, interfacing. And what I do is, so you don't have to go back and look at it. I trim the pattern piece between these two points up to about an eighth of an inch right here. So basically I take a curve to zero here and here zero eighth of an inch zero and then if you don't do these two th these two ends because that seems kind of like oh this is so silly I'm doing all this work for that hey Walter um, do it from here to here it's more important so from here to this point here I make a line you know an eighth of an inch down right here and a, a gentle curve and I just trim it away to nothing at these points so leave Really, you're trying to leave the um, junction of the seam allowance right there. It's zero, zero there. Um, but I just go from the tip to tip. It's not too hard to, so. And then that way, yeah, you get this effect. You, you've basically, that's how you create an under collar pattern. So if you're doing a really lightweight fabric and you really wanted a crisp collar, you could interface both layers. Um, I've done that before. I think I did that on that Fairfield button up, in fact because that, that flannel is pretty thin. Literally, my husband wears it every day, though. <laughs> like, every day, all day. So I think he's going to love this. In fact, this fabric feels just like this over shirt I bought for him once. It was really expensive, and I bought it as a Christmas gift, and it was in red, and it felt just like this. And it's got a quilted lining. Forgot about that. All right, so we're going to do this collar and collar stand. Um... Yeah, I need to send all or do the uh, Patreon um, schedule for this month for Zooms, and I haven't because I've been getting like little messages. I'm going to be out of town. And I think I'm just going to set two times. You can come to any of those two times. Just so you guys know, there's a few of you in here. All right. This is my outer collar stand because it's the one with the interfacing. This is my inner. 
and then this is going to be my um, collar. And so this is going to be the last seam that I finish right here at the top on the outside. All right, so this isn't my usual method. I'm trying to get better at it. I've just been wanting to try it a lot lately, so bear with me. It's been going pretty good. I'm going to trim off some of this interfacing so I can see my edge. I want to be pretty precise. I wish I would have trimmed this off yesterday. <laughs> Didn't know I got so much outside of the lines. It's like you're coloring outside the lines. Look at all that. All right. So I'm gonna make sure all these little threads too are nice and cleaned up and put them into the seam allowance because I can see a little bit of my thread kind of going down into the placket. All right, and we're gonna hang this off three eighths of an inch. I thought about making this flannel, soft flannel side towards the neck, but I don't want it to look too different when it's the shirt's open. So we're gonna line this up just like this, right? So you want your collar stand hanging off the seam allowance. Hopefully you've trimmed it down to quarter inch if it's five eighths. Oh, interesting. Oh, cool, Libby. It really is Amy. <laughs> it's the whole, what? Don't put pressure on me like that. <laughs> the whole trail of pattern me. what? Is it? Why? Is this the like, is this the preferred way to do it for like high-end shirt making? I don't actually know. I, I, you know, you, you uh, sewists start specializing in certain styles of sewing and shirt making is one of them. I'm just making sure none of my threads are, see like this looks kind of thick. Yep, see, look at that. See, it just looks nicer if you get rid of it now. Here's another one. Put it towards the seam allowance so it doesn't hang out. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of look so the notch for the um, shoulder is actually behind the yoke seam here. And there's a notch on the collar stand. We'll put a few pins in and get to know it here. Our non-negotiable spots line up. The shirt feels like a blankie. That would be a very nice gift. <laughs> I tried this on a whim recently. Was it on the, it wasn't on the Fairfield though. Which shirt did I make before the Fairfield that had a collar and a collar stand? I can't remember. Center back. All the non-negotiable spots. Uh, we have a notch on the other side. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Okay. It's like it didn't nick all the way, but you can kind of tell. It's kind of like arche an archaeological dig sometimes when you're looking for your notches. You're like, I know that mark. That's man-made, you know? <laughs> all right. So, um, oh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> yes, Elena. That's the one I use in the video. Mm hmm Yeah, wasn't that? Yeah, but I thought I did it before that, Ray. Hey, Nancy. That's really awesome. I'll have to check them out. Yeah, I thought I did a different one. All right, so we're just going to do a three-eighths. You know what? I feel like you're supposed to put your your collar on before this, but I'm, I'm not, I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to figure out the method that works for me. So sometimes I just figure it out. 
we want this edge to line up. I remember I did a, a stay stitch around the neckline, so I'm just trying to make sure I sew that inside the seam. Sorry. <laughs> there, yeah, Libby, I know you really love that shirt. I thought you would appreciate that person on in the Facebook group posted one. I should have put more pins in, but I'm just being a baby right now. You know, just being like baby staring me, very cautious, learning. shirt up here. There seems like this is a little concerning, but I guess it's fine. All right. When your shirt's like kind of coming off the table in front of you, it can actually distort what you're trying to sew. So just keep it up there and um, it'll line up a little better. Cause you know, if it was pulling like this right here, it's going to make that edge pull weird. Ow, I just poked myself, jeez Louise. It's amazing how poking yourself with a pin and hitting your head on a cupboard door invokes instant anger. Uh-oh, what happened? Did, did you get, did you get uh, modded, Walter, or did you do that? <laughs> All right, so we're just making sure all these edges are the same, like lined up basically. I'm pulling the shirt up to the edge and the collar stand down. I kind of, you see me kind of pulling like this. It's trying to get those little you can feel those little wrinkles under there. I'm trying to get rid of those. Oh, it did. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to put our color on here. <clears throat> and I don't get lost in the sauce on this one either. So this is how my I want my collar to sit, right? This is the outside of the shirt, right? So we're gonna flip it to the side of the collar stand like this, right? So this is my under collar is facing up right now. There's my seam, right? And I'm on the inside collar stand. Line up all these edges. And then we're gonna go the whole length of the collar and we're gonna do a little bit of the collar stand as well. I forgot, I need to trim, I need to clip my neckline. See, I'm not used to this order. We're gonna clip into the neckline and make sure that we're getting a um, nice curve here. This stuff is so thick. But like I say, it's not thick as in dense, it's fluffy. So it's very easy to sew. <laughs> Some flannels can be really tightly woven, and you put a few layers in there. They're kind of tough. They're kind of tough, you know. <laughs> Baby stare meat, so it's very careful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not being a. I'm not saying I'm being a baby, as in like, in an insulting way. I'm just telling myself we're being, we're we're learning. <laughs> I don't have, you know what? I don't have it on live chat. Oh, I think I've, oh. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I've been forgetting to do that. I've just realized. Okay. All right, so now we have our collar right here, right? 
So the outer collar to the inside collar stand. And this collar edge needs to go to this notch right here. That is non-negotiable. You really wanna make sure you hit that and you hit it on both sides so that your collar is symmetrical at the center front. <clears throat> and we really love it when patterns have that notch because a lot of people don't put it on. <laughs> and I can't stand it. Okay, here's some of my messy threads here, kind of dipping down into the shirt. See that? I can just see it looks really thick. That's how I know. The side will probably be fine. It's because I ended there. All right, and so this is the tricky part of this whole thing. Like on in on paper, this method seems a lot easier than the other way, and, and it kind of is, but this is the tricky part. So we're gonna be sewing our collar stand right sides together for just a little bit. So we have to shove all of this, this placket, this collar, into this narrow little collar stand right here, right? Sorry, let me put my hands down. So then this is what I do. You could stitch this on first and you know, let's just do that so that we can get rid of the pins. We'll do that and then I can show you better. So we're just gonna stitch this just inside that 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you don't wanna catch anything but one collar stand and the the collar itself. It's not nearly as hard to sew as what we just did. It should just go together. As long as your seam allowances have been accurate and the pattern's drafted correctly. There's no easing or anything like that. All right, we can get rid of these pins now. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to sew this collar stand right side together. So what I do is I usually fold up the collar like this. I kind of roll it. <laughs> and same with the placket. You can even pin it if you want, but I wouldn't just because that might cause another issue. In fact, let's let's pull let's turn this this way. Like this. All right. And we really want this collar stand, we just want a little bit, like we want to get onto the collar, right? So let's try and find some notches so we can be symmetrical. Shove it all in there. Try not to distort that collar stand. I'm wondering if it would be easier to sew this direction. What if I started up here. Oh, see, there's a notch right there. So does that go right there? That might go right there. See, look at how distorted this is right here. That's because of all that thickness. But look, if I push it, it's it's okay. Good to know. Good to know. I'm kind of curious. What if I do start it from this direction? Maybe that would be easier. All right, yeah, I'm gonna try that. So I'm holding this pretty taut, but I'm also trying to keep it relaxed so I'm not, I know I'm not distorting either layer. And we're just gonna sew this. Now remember, you have a placket right here. See our placket is right here. We want to go right alongside that. All right, let's see how it looks. I'm gonna trim this corner. I'm gonna put a few little clips in this, just trim it down a little bit. I don't wanna use these. And then kind of like the yoke, we pull it out like this. What I like about this method is that it makes this whole area right here look so nice. 
I see, this is a, I see definitely, even with professionals, this area right here, a little dicey. <laughs> but this way you get a nice clean, this is my back stitch thread from uh, one of the other, from when I attached the collar. See, is why you make sure your threads are inside there because you don't really want to be clipping, clipping them. My flannel is going to hide that. Let's see, then you don't have to worry about this little juncture here. And obviously these lines are going to definitely really call attention to any kind of weirdness. But that looks, that looks pretty good. See this like line right here? makes that curve look really flat. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. And then we do the last part and that's part last part's really easy. Yeah, right, Terry. I agree. I think the um I feel like the first time I tried this was a really 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 long time ago, like decades. <laughs> a couple decades ago. And um I tried it this way thinking, oh, this is the, this is the secret. And I did not, it did not go well. <clears throat> now this way seems a lot easier than the way I usually do because you don't have to blind him or not blind him. You don't have to finish this whole long edge, which is um, kind of a front and center, you know, piece of the collar, even the way I do it, which I do it backwards from everybody else. All right. So same thing. We're going to tuck the collar in and the placket here and I kind of liked going from this from this way toward the collar stand so I'm going to try that again I felt like that gave me the greatest control over symmetry so here's my little notch I'm going to line it back up right there with that other one because it's non-negotiable And then, you know, like, this is kind of the game. Like, if maybe if I wasn't doing flannel, I might be able to go a little further, right? But this is pretty, it's kind of chonky right now, you know? So I'm just kind of working it in there. But see, I want this to be relaxed. I don't want to, what if um, I'm so bent on getting as much of it as possible that I end up stretching out one edge? That is so something I would have done at one point. Now I just know, like, you know... Let's just do some of it because <laughs> the next step's actually pretty easy. All right, so let's get it under there. And remember, you're approaching the placket right here, right? This is the only tricky part. It's always the tricky part of the pl placket is, or the collar collar stand is making sure you, you kind of nail it along the edge of the placket. And you can feel it first, like, okay, did I did I get close enough there? Let's see, where's my stitch line in comparison? You know, and, and go over it before you turn it right side out. All right, so let's get rid of some of this thickness here and this corner. I get kind of nervous trimming really close to the corner. If you were doing something like a linen or a less stable fabric, I'd be really nervous because anytime you get close to that corner, it can just come apart, you know? All right, so let's pull this out here. Look at that. I mean, it's just so much better, like from the beginning than the other way. I mean, I, I probably, it looks really good in person. I'm even impressed. <laughs> all right, so now all we have left is we're on the right side of the jack, the shirt, right? This is the outside here. And the reason we do it here is that theoretically your collar is always going to be turned down over that seam. So you're not going to see that last finish, you know? So let's go iron it a little bit because like I say, I have this chunky fabric and, um, this is my one argument. I will say the one argument for having wider seam allowances is that you don't have this valley here like this. See? The valley. Here's the seam allowances and here is the fabric. And so that thickness between the top of the seam allowance and the collar stand there 
If the seam allowance was wider, it could fill it up, but I still maintain it's just better to use a narrower seam allowance, allowance and that's what they would do if they were professionally sewing this. Um, you could make these seam allowances smaller um, and more compressed as well. Boy, we have a lot of bots today. <laughs> you know, so you could even stitch down your seam allowances a few times, just like run it through your machine, just the seam allowances. It'll make it flatter. It's a easy way to do it. Just do it a few times and it'll get more condensed. Look at this, let's, let's do that on this. I never do this, so let's do it. This is the neck. We've already clipped it. Just make sure you don't catch anything else. It keeps wanting to, the little flanges keep kind of poking up through my presser foot. You know, and then it's a little bit flatter just an idea. All right, let's iron it a little, little bit and then we will be able to do this last finishing step. It's looking really good though. I want this shirt. <laughs> you know, one thing I, I just remembered and I did pretty good this time is whatever shirt I did this on besides that Fairfield, because I know I did it on the Fairfield. But I swear I did this on another shirt before the Fairfield. Was it maybe off camera? like on the Melolo or something. Shoot, I just can't remember. But anyway, um, make sure when you do this seam right here that you are making sure you go across this placket in a perpendicular way. Because I know on mine what happened was I got this little like blump right here. And it was just because, I don't know, I just wasn't very squared. <clears throat> I think it was the fabric too, like the fabric was kind of giving me some problems. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna press it a little bit. Press that collar stand up. That'll help flatten it too. I'm gonna press the seam allowance into that collar stand, just like this. This is surprisingly not hard to iron. <laughs> I feel like everything lately has been really hard for me to iron. <laughs> it's making me miss having an ironing board here, but <clears throat> I, uh, the ironing board is just not very, it doesn't really play nice in my studio. Those legs, man, they like to stick out and trip me. And I just like how sturdy this surface is. All right, so now we have our Collar, collar stand here and it's, I've pressed it mostly. Let's see, we'll press down here a little bit more. So give it a good tug to like kind of tug it because you don't want this collar stand to um, kind of get slack, you know. I tend to rush things and that's why I tell you all these things because those were, they, those are total Ceramy classic mistakes. <laughs> All right, so now I look for all of my landmarks. So here is my center back notch right here. And so let's find it on this collar and it's right there. So now what I find is, all right, if I turn this three eighths and I line it up to the seam line there, is it actually flat on this side? Cause let it relax, make sure that it's actually gonna be flat. And let's just put a few pins in. This is so much easier to pin than the other method when you're going along the neck. So much easier. It's straight, it's not a curve from the neckline. It's in a low risk area. I sound like an insurance person. But that is kind of what you're looking for, right? With sewing is insurance. <laughs> And I always call them backup plans. Like I'm always saying like, okay, what are we gonna do if this goes south? You know, like what's my plan when I'm experimenting or taking a risk? What's my backup plan? And it's kind of rare that you can't come up with at least one backup plan. <clears throat> and there's been a few times where I've said, well, my backup plan is pretty much just a toss it. Like I don't really have one in this instance. That's really rare. 
Here you don't really need one. I don't like those pens. I like these pens. Give me these. These are just a little stubby for this chunky flannel. So see right here, you get this weird little like blip. That's probably because when I sewed this seam here, I wasn't perfectly like perpendicular to the seam allowance, you know, or parallel, I mean. So I have this weird little like bump. We're just gonna kind of finesse it a little bit, iron it and kind of ease it in there and it'll be fine. And I'll show it to you in, under the machine, but you can see, see that? It's because this is stretched out a little bit. I think that's what it is. So we're gonna kind of try and correct that without getting a tuck. It's gonna be tricky. I may even have to take a few stitches to do it. I didn't get it over here, see that? I don't remember which one I did first either. This looks really wide right here. I'm just wondering what that, that is about. <laughs> is it just an optical illusion? I don't think so. That does look wider right there. I didn't, Amy. Wait, someone did, um, someone I feel like sent me something yeah, uh, from the wall, those are pretty nice. I've had those. Um, they're not, like, I, they, this is a pretty heavy iron. <clears throat> but I can't be up against the wall here because of the stream. Yeah, this is one little problem. So let's try and see what we can do to kind of fix this little blump. We don't like blumps. I am still thinking, like, do, do you guys like that idea in January if we all make accessories for our sewing? <laughs> it seems kind of, kind of corny in some ways, but kind of cool in other. Like um, someone um, showed us, it was, it was Bonnie Jean. Bonnie Jean, what's your, what's your um, YouTube name? Are you here? I'm not connecting who you are on YouTube to who you are on Facebook. Um, I can't think of who you are, but um, she showed her thread catcher and it was like a, a wire frame and it had these hooks and then so it hooked over the feet of her serger and then it had a little wire frame to hold it open with just a muslin bag hanging off of it. I thought it was pretty cool. And then um, I was thinking of pattern weights. Yeah, the thread catcher, right, Aisha? Um, the ironing board cover, because mine at home is ripping. <laughs> oh my gosh, the sun's coming out. Um, ironing board cover, pattern weights, thread catcher. We could make a ham or a salami. I'm missing one big thing. What was it? Anyway. Some folks could make pin cushions. I even have a pincushion pattern. It's my pie, pie and a cupcake. <laughs> but I know a lot of people like the magnetic kind. You can make a magnetic one, you know? You go to, um, what is it, KJ Magnetics. Get the super strong. Oh, machine cover. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, let's look at that weird, okay, let's look at this side first, right? Let's see, I've pinned it. Is it looking all flat? It's looking all flat. I think we're okay there. Sorry, my foot's on the, the foot pedal. Uh, let's look at that blumpy spot right here. Can I finesse that? I mean, I think I can, but you know, I think the thing to do is take out a few stitches right here. If you have this, we need to let it relax a little bit. It's, it's like it's coming at it at a different angle. I can't see my threads at all with this fabric. They just kind of disappear. There we go. All right, let's take out just a few. Get rid of all these threads. There aren't any on the outside. Okay, let's see, will that help? 
because now I have more room to kind of bring this edge over that way a little bit and kind of true it up to um, be where it's supposed to be. That was a little easier. I think that's going to work. Okay. Maybe it's a power washer. Maybe that's the sound. It's kind of annoying. I can't believe you guys can't hear it. Oh, I know, Penny. They never have rescheduled it. I don't even know if they're doing classes there. God, we could have met that long ago. That would have been so awesome. Me too, Allison. Like, I can't even look at mine and it just rips. <laughs> it's so threadbare. <laughs> oh, and you know, I have to admit, the one thing I fail at constantly is ironing board covers. I'm not very good at making them. You can hear it, Walter? Yeah. I don't know what it is. All right, so we're going to go all the way around our collar, collar stand, but we're not going to just start where our opening is. We're going to start maybe down here at the center back neck, and we're going to go all the way around in one continuous stitch, and we're going to put that back stitch right at the center back. You can put it up here if you want. We could do that. This is the center back. And um, remember, this is the outside, and so our bobbin is landing on the inside. Nobody's going to see this, but you can, you know, pay attention if you want. If your needle's landing to the left of this seam, then it'll land on the, the collar stand on the other side. So that's the way to look at it, just like in binding. Yeah, if this noise was going, I wouldn't record a video, but the fact that you guys were saying you can't even hear it makes me go, well, shoot, what could you hear? <laughs> I didn't know the Roomba was loud. I thought they were quiet. So this is another one of those where you don't want this, this edge. See how it's getting, I'm getting a little bit of slack there because we really don't have anywhere to go. Like it ends right here, right? So try and ease it in. I think I just eased it in a little too much, but back on track. You want this whole area to be nice and flat. This area was already gonna be a little problematic because it's the side that I'm trying to fix. So hopefully I am doing okay. I found that if I don't stop on curves, the curve looks smoother. I think I can go one more stitch. Can I go one more stitch? I can go one more stitch. Right there. All right. Now, make sure you're pulling this and keeping these two collar stands directly one over the other. Sorry, it's so bright. The sun's coming out too. <clears throat> um, because you don't want that to land in the wrong spot on the other side. Ooh, the, it really does some kooky stuff. <sighs> oh, I see, I see. So, right, so because if this over rotates, this collar stand over rotates, then you, you might be not landing on the collar stand on the other side. So, pull it. Remember, it's sewn. You can really pull on it and make sure that it's staying one on top of the other. I don't know how straight I got that, but. that not being too white. <laughs> there we go. Is this the side I thought was kind of wide? It looks kind of wide. This is all sewn down on both sides, so we're just really trying to get a nice top stitch. Not something I'm really known for, but I try. All right. I love this a uh, method too because it, oh, that's not very good. Oh man, I don't like that. Let me see if I can take it out. 
I was just about to say, it's nice when you don't have to have your back stitch right here at the collar stand. I'm gonna take it out on this side. Where is it? Oh man. Don't make any mistakes with this fabric. I don't want to use my seam ripper. I'm a little scared. Maybe I should have used gray thread. Then at least I could see my stitches really easily, you know? I'm gonna go back to here. Whew, really wants to grab that white thread. Twill weave, man. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Sorry guys. All right. Oh, awesome, Terry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really liking this method. I have to think about it. It's only the third time I've done it. <clears throat> I'm really trying to figure out like what I think works best for me. I think definitely starting from here and going down when I attach the collar stands together. I hadn't done it that way before. Maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Um, I liked that. It felt like I had more control over what I wanted, you know, and what I was gonna get. Don't pattern drafters know to draft collars and collar stands so that they're the exact precise number of stitches when you go to finish them? I mean, come on. That's totally a joke, by the way. All right, we're back uh, to our hole, right? So, you know, what you're trying to balance with this top stitching is you wanna be close enough that when you close the hole, no one can tell that's where the hole was, but you don't wanna to be too close because you don't wanna be right on the edge because it looks kind of weird. And then you can kind of go, oh, that must be where the hole was, you know? All right. I think the most, the biggest drawback with this flannel is it shows the imperfect stitching. Like, unless it's perfect, it really shows it. But I think I'm gonna do another row around. Where's that? Here's my back stitch right here. I'm gonna um, do one more all the way around, like the collar. Oh, here's my little, um, where I was easing in that See that? It's a little bit bumpy there. Hmm. I think I will fix that. I'm gonna try and do that though. Yeah, stick my zoom ripper in there. It's like surgery, huh? Just gonna fix this right here. We knew this was gonna give me a little bit of a problem. I just didn't think about it soon enough when I started to go sewing, sewing it. I thought it was at that end. <laughs> All right. I think one of the ways I'm gonna combat this is I'm gonna sew it from this way and go that way. Beat it at its own game, you know? The argument for doing it from the inside is this does look a little nicer, I will say, you know? So if you wanted this to look like this, like to look like this on the outside, that's what you're gonna get, you know? Cause see, look, I did, I kind of missed it right here. This is why we're doing it from this side. Up to you. 
<laughs> it is a marathon of bots. I don't think so, Penny. <laughs> My ad revenue has dropped so drastically lately. <clears throat> but, and that's not a big deal to me, just so you guys know, that's not a, a big deal to me. I just figured that's because none of us are watching as much right now, right? Because it's just a busy time of year. But then I saw like my payout and it was about the same. It was like 220. And I was like, huh, well, that's interesting. Um, I'm wondering if they've reconfigured it. Because you would think I, if uh, I had more bots, there would be some good momentum. I can't believe I'm putting a back stitch right here. That really disappoints me. I didn't think that through. That was a lot easier to correct that, but um, I have a back stitch right here. Thankfully the flannel kind of disappears it. I wasn't really paying attention to the um, this right here. So that, okay, that would be my argument. So like I said, I'm trying to learn how to do this. <clears throat> Doing as much of this curve when you're sewing it and you've got it all folded in there as possible is obviously it is to your advantage. The only reason mine got so big is because I took it out to kind of deal with that blump. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have tried to deal with it without doing that. I'm going to put, oh, I really want another row of stitching. I'm going to do it. I want it to be flatter. Yeah, this area right here is really problematic. Yeah, I wouldn't click it, Walter. Yeah, it's like a weird, it kind of looks like a link. We could probably Google it. I really like how flat this makes it. It probably didn't look blumpy on your screen, but it was, you know, it was kind of thick because the flannel is so thick. Let's see how it looks. All right, can't even see. That's where we were just, that was where the hole is. Fabric kind of makes you dizzy. Forgot my tag. <laughs> there we go. And it's gonna go right over left, just like that. This is also this little um, spot right here on your collar stand is usually where your um, collar meets. It should be the center of your placket it is on this side. It isn't on this side. <laughs> it's funny because I did use the um, notch, but you know this is all on the bias, right? There is a chance that you can be kind of distorting that, and maybe I did. Is this my problem side? This is my problem side too. See, look at this one's kind of cute and blunt, and this one's a little narrower and long. Maybe I shouldn't point all this out to you, but it is going one over the other. <clears throat> and I think sewing it with this method on a fabric that's not as um, gushy, I think it would be the way to go. <clears throat> oh, it was, Nancy. I can't believe you just typed that word in my chat.
Yeah, it's like two words, but it's it's hyperlinked, Penny. My favorite um, uh, comment I get now that's a bot is it says, oh my God, this is just what I needed. And I'm always like, oh, that's so awesome. My how-to helped somebody. And then I click on it and it's this gigantic comment in um, I think Korean <clears throat> with links in it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you made me feel good for a second there. Because <laughs> some people do say that. <laughs> so I'm always like, oh. So now I kind of want to do the double stitch around the pocket. You know? Maybe down the placket. The pocket, the placket. We've seen it like that, right? If I do two rows, it makes it kind of narrow, but the buttonhole still fits. Should have done it before I put it into a collar collar stand. But it does look nice, you know, and, and it's completely finished in under there. That's our where our hole was. Makes your um, collar stand right here just so nice. This is such a problematic area right here with these. That thread makes me a little nervous. It's white. Therefore, not my stitch. Nice, Ray. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow we're going to be putting the sleeves on and the um, shirt sleeve plackets. This is a, a different method than the ones I've done in my how to. And the one in my how to uses the Fairfield. So this will be great. This is a different style. There's another one. Do, 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 do. Oh, you already got it. Oh, you're fast. Nope, not feeling it. <laughs> I really calmed down the sharpness so that the lines wouldn't play with the camera. It looks kind of like a sheen. Let's see, I'll sharpen it a tiny bit so you can kind of see. There we go. I think it looks pretty good. Breaking the collar in a little bit. This shoulder looks wider uh, than the Fairfield. So maybe more of a drop shoulder look. Oops, right over left. Looking good though. Yeah. Ooh, fennel, I haven't had fennel in a bit. All right, cool. So tomorrow, okay, or not tomorrow, I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday I'll be doing the sleeves and they have the, um, shirt sleeve placket, so the little house style or column or tower, whatever you call it. Um, yeah, and I'll try and figure out what's going on with that little discount code, the Jensen 10 one. Something's up with it. Not sure what. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be a capital J, but that's how she showed it to me. So we'll see. Sorry about that, guys. And it'll work on the Anna as well, which is the women's version, so... Cool. Well, thanks for coming, you guys. Um, I'll see you guys Saturday. Tomorrow I have a new video coming out, and it's the review of the hashtags and my first three pattern reviews revealed. So we'll see. Hi, Raquel. <laughs> Thought that collar was weird. <laughs> Night, Louise. Yeah, I'm glad, you guys. We can't sew enough of these, can we? That's so funny. We've, we've made a lot of button-ups. And there's never enough. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Um, I'll see you Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for coming. And um, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, the first three are re revealed. What do you think they're going to be? Should I give you a hint? Two tops and one bottom. That's all I'll say. Bye.